Hi, it's Lindy Mtongana from the podcast Africa and the Global Illicit Economy. I just wanted to tell you about a new podcast series that has been launched by the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime and produced by Volume. It's called Too Many Enemies, and the series looks at the assassination crisis in South Africa through the lens of a very specific case. Here's the presenter and producer, Paul McNally. So Too Many Enemies is about really the assassination crisis in Southern Africa. It's something that's very close to my heart in terms of I've been looking at it for a number of years. And we were really looking at a case that would epitomize what's going on in Southern Africa, because we kind of know that to tell a story about something so broad and so wide, like assassinations in Southern Africa is very complicated. And you could kind of tell multiple podcasting series about that. So we wanted to kind of go really deeply focused on one assassination case. So we chose the case of Wandile Boswana, who was a businessman, a billionaire, a Rand billionaire. Okay. So not a not a dollar billionaire, but a Rand billionaire. And he was killed in October 2015. And we drilled down into that case and all the other things that kind of spur off from that. So we started with the murder itself and the tragedy that it affected the people around him, but then also dug a little bit deeper around like what businesses he was involved in at the time of his death and what might have led to someone wanting him to be wiped out. Because it was very public, he came up to um, an off-ramp He was shot nine times where people were just spraying bullets at him. They just came out of a car and they were just spraying massive amounts of bullets at him. His driver um, was shot twice and luckily managed to drive them both to hospital and get her some assistance. So she survived, but then he ultimately died. He was only 43. He was very rich and very charismatic and respected. So, I mean, especially through my process of investigating it, I wanted to know like how you could kind of get into that kind of lifestyle and then ultimately get killed. And we found out that he was aware of these people that had allegedly organized his hit. And we know that because they actually were arrested and have been on trial for organizing this assassination. So we wanted to get into the background of it. We wanted to get into the lifestyle that might lead to an assassination. But then we also wanted to bring out some of the major players. We interview private investigators who have been employed by the family. And obviously there's, you know, many people involved when a huge profiled person gets killed who want to investigate this case. And they don't necessarily always want to go through the police. So private investigators are important and they hopefully will work with the police. But sometimes those relationships break down. We then wanted to go into the assassins themselves But the people that were arrested was really interesting because there was someone who was very famous, a very high profile sort of, I've got to be very careful with what I call him, but a very high profile individual who's been called a lot of things in the press and he allegedly organized the hit. So he basically was the go-between between who ordered the hit and who actually pulled the trigger. So kind of a middleman. So he's on trial at the moment, along with his co-accused who, you know, allegedly pulled the trigger or some of the people that pulled the trigger. There's been talks that there are other people that haven't been arrested and there was a whole group of people that actually pulled the trigger on him. But then things get more exciting because then they kind of move into this idea of the taxi industry. So Fusi K.K. Matabela, he's the guy who allegedly organized the assassination. He was deeply rooted in the taxi association. And for those of you who don't know, the Taxi Association has been called, I always love this expression, by Mark Shaw, the director of GI, as like a reservoir for the assassination industry. And it really is a place where most of assassinations in some shape or form, so in terms of like employing an assassin or in terms of some kind of connection, come from this taxi industry. And and this was the biggest learning curve for me because because the taxi industry has such a bad reputation and is considered, you know, they're on the roads, they're kind of terrible drivers and all these kind of cliches. But they're also a huge business and industry in South Africa and other African countries. And they also transport most of the population. So we managed to dig into the fact of this taxi association that had been dissolved because there'd been so much violence and kind of humanize that a little bit, kind of give it some kind of breadth of why a taxi association can become so violent and how it can also be reversed. Because there are a lot of people involved that don't want 
their association to be incredibly violent. They just want to go to work and drive their taxis and earn a living. So that was a really different perspective that I thought was necessary that we gave to the series. And then finally, and probably the most salacious, is the fact of the people that allegedly ordered the hits. And there's numerous accusations that have come across since 2015 when the assassination happened that top brass politicians within the ruling party, the ANC in South Africa, have been ordering the hits. So these are unsubstantiated. They've been completely denied by the politicians in question to many media at many different points. Um, But these things, accusations still persist. Too Many Enemies is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you get your podcasts. It's also available on the GI website and on News24 in South Africa. We'll be back next week when we'll be looking at what the sudden death of Idris Deby, the president of Chad, means for the illicit economy and security situation in Chad and the Central Sahara. In the meantime, we'll leave you with the trailer for Too Many Enemies. Enjoy. You can just hoot, uh, you're at the second gate. I'm here to talk to Mike about an assassination. This is a new podcast series called Too Many Enemies, exploring the assassination of a billionaire. Many guys came out and many guys shot many bullets, but just randomly shooting, shooting the car up, shooting it full of holes. And this case represents the full-blown assassination crisis that the region is going through. There have been 50 mining-related assassinations and attempted assassinations since 2016. And I went there and I met up with Vusi and he pointed out Boswana. And Vusi apparently told him that he had a problem with that guy. In the past 10 years, at least 345 people have lost their lives in politically linked hits in KwaZulu-Natal. Also, lawyers, judges, magistrates, and businessmen across South Africa and Mozambique have been targeted and killed. It becomes cheaper, easier, accepted to kill somebody who stands in your way for economic reasons, for tenders, for example. This podcast series has been produced by me, Paul McNally, and podcasting company Volume. It's brought to you by the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime in partnership with News24. Over six episodes, Too Many Enemies will look at what the assassination of Wandile Boswana means for the state of politics, crime and justice in South Africa today. He calls the shots, basically, you know, I mean, he's the one that called them. He's the one that said, OK, we need to take this guy out. And he's the one that, you know, gave him money for it. He's the one that paid them wards of money, you know, wards of hard cash. It's a story involving politicians, taxi bosses, assassins, and flamingos. Get Too Many Enemies wherever you get your podcasts. Volume.